OK, I'm going to get started. So my name is Chris. Um, I'm going to talk about this Arduino cat faucet that I made. So I'm originally from DC, the DC area. DC is pretty big. And uh, about five months ago, I saw this huge white star in the sky. So I went to the star, and then I got on this red line. That took me nonstop. I traveled by map, and I arrived to Portland about five months ago. And then from that red line, I got on another red line, and it took me through some awesome like cross-dissolve fades, and uh, took me to Nepal. And there I met uh, Dr. Jones, and he taught me all about electronics. I put some of those electronics on my belt, and I helped to save the Goonies. After that, <laughs> after that, I made this cat faucet for my cat. This is my cat. And uh, I actually didn't want to bring this up, but uh, right before I moved to Portland, she died. So this is not about a dead cat, please. That's why I didn't want to bring it up, OK? OK, so, so like she was awesome, awesome cat. And uh, so now, now this talks, the dead cat talk. But uh, like there's no way I can say like she used to drink. And like I, it's like English, English has betrayed me, you know? So, so like I had a lot of fun building this project. And it ran for a long time. And the reason why it stopped is because she died. So uh, yeah. OK, so the reason why this came around is you're going to say, this guy has too much time in hand. And you're right. So. But there's some insight here that hopefully is valuable to you guys. Is uh, this job, and then this job, and then this job. So there's like a gap in the first job. And this is like, um, I was talking to this non-technical boss at this like really large company. And, I, and he was like, well, the contract's over. And there's like six, month, uh, six weeks of like no funding. So we're sending everybody home. And I'm like, awesome. I get to like work on all my spike list, right? So he's like, spike list, what's that? And uh, I said, well, it's like. Like technical people, it's sort of like athletes and like musicians, and I was like trying to go through this thing, and like that's when I realized like there's a difference between like people that talk about stuff and then the, the practitioners, right? So like if you, you can like be a music critic and you can be a musician, and but the musicians have to practice, right? So like basically I had like six weeks, I like learned a bunch of stuff. It was super super awesome. So like about 2010, the second opportunity came up when I got a new job after the red job, and. Uh, <laughs> the, the red job is Oracle. Oh my God. Okay, so yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm not even gonna go down that rabbit hole. Okay, so um, so yeah. So like, uh, I talked to this other, my current job, the orange job, which is super awesome. But so I was like, uh, like everything's good. Like we got a start date, and like yeah. I was like, do you mind if I push it back like a month? And like why? And I said, well, I want to like work on my spike list because now this is like a thing I do, right? So they said, yeah, that's awesome. That sounds great. So I got a month off, and that's when I built the cat faucet. OK. I did some other stuff, but the cat faucet is the main thing that I did. <laughs> OK, so why? Why would I do this? So like, my cat likes to drink fresh water only, not the little like, cyclic one, not like from a bowl. Like, she knows it's cold, it's fresh. She can tell. So that means you have to like, go up, you have to like, turn on the faucet, and you have to stand there for like, one or two minutes every day. Right? And I, so I have like, all this time to think about this problem. Like, I could build this. Right? And I told my wife, I was like, like I could totally script this, you know? So, <laughs> so like, it really bugged me. So that was the first thing. So like, this is like my, my dream. So it has to automatically water, right? And then I wanted to know, like, is this about water or is this about control? Right? <laughs> so is it the process of watering her or is it the actual water? So if I logged it, and then in the middle of the night, no one's up, right? Like, if she goes and gets it, right, then I know that it's about the water, right? So uh, the other thing is like, it had to be temporary. So I can't like, put holes in the wall, no like, vampire type. There's a lot of like, tutorials on the, on the web, or there's only like two. But uh, like, uh, about, like, putting a vampire tab was like a solenoid valve. And it, I didn't want that. It had to be like, temporary so I could move it to another sink. And uh, yeah. OK. <clears throat> so like, uh, staycation time starts. And I'm just like, sta this, is, like this is like an hour or like, two hours, like, just staring at the prom, right? So, I'm like doing like readme driven development. I'm like, what do I want? Like, how do I want it to work? You know? Uh, so I'm like writing the readme first. And I'm like, 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 I don't know. Th th this for me was like a thing. I don't know. So like I would like I would like stare at the sink and like make like imaginary lines like where I wanted things to exist in, in space. And uh, that that actually really helped. Like just just like the, the visualization was like this thing was gonna be 3D and 3D is, 3D can be kind of hard to like visualize. So I stared at the sink. So I stared at the sink for a long time. And then I like, uh, started like, sketching. So I go to the sink, sketch, go to the sink, sketch. And like, I made all these measurements, which I didn't use. Like, I was just, like, just 
you know, just throwing out everything. Like, numbers, numbers are good, you know. So eventually I had like this flux capacitor moment, right? And it was this box. It came to me, Marty, you know, or something. So, like, this box was like all, I, like, everything else, you could just like Gaussian blur the rest of it, you know. But this box was like the thing. And like, once I had this plan, like, that was good. Like, the plan, it's plan's a plan. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But like, once I had the plan, like it's time to put down the paper and like start building, right? So is, is plans not the final thing. It's just a it's just a plan, right? So I, but I knew that like this was the plan, and I knew the plan was good enough. And I don't I don't know why. I guess that's just like intuition or something. So I was happy with that. Uh, so I had to like make this box, right? So so now we're gonna start like looking how I build it. But before I do, I want to get like off on a tangent, which I'm really good at doing. Um, I want to talk about the movie uh, Edge of Tomorrow, which it, it was okay. <laughs> It was an okay movie. I'm sorry. I'm not like I'm not like a huge fan, but it makes like a perfect metaphor. So, and someone, uh, Justin Searles talked about this at uh, uh, RubyConf this year. Uh, when you're looking at work, like, and my my project is definitely not the perfect run. Okay, does everybody know this movie? Yeah. Okay. I, of course, no. So now I have to explain anyway. Like one person doesn't know, so anyway, I don't even want to ask that. <laughs> Okay, so like in the movie, it's basically like uh, respawn, like gaming kind of uh, movie. So like he dies, but he remembers. It's like Groundhog Day. So like he dies, he remembers what happened, and then but he like dies like 200 times in the movie. I'm not spoiling anything. It's a fun movie to watch. Uh, but like by by the end of the run, the enemy like it looks like Tom Cruise is perfect, right? Because he knows like he this guy popped up, he got killed. So like he responds like I know that guy's gonna pop up, so I'm gonna avoid him, you know. So like that's what like when you do a git rebase like for a feature branch and like someone looks at your code like wow this guy Tom Cruise is amazing, right? So like that that's like the point. This is Justin Searle's point, but not not Edge of Tomorrow. He said it much better than I'm saying. But like when you watch the when you like do a git clone and do an ls, you're watching like Tom Cruise's final run. You you know. But when you do a git log and do a diff between each of the each of the commits, which nobody does. That's like watching the entire movie. Like Tom Cruise died like 200 times. Like someone died like making these Git logs. Like they suffered, you know. <laughs> so I'm not saying I'm not saying it was a perfect run, but like in terms of retrospectives, like I'm telling this to myself. Like just try to like imagine the Git log and the Git diff. Okay. So I'm trying to walk you through the Git log, and uh, I hope I I'm not being too pedantic, but I'm really trying to like go through the Git log. Okay. So I had that sketch. The sketch had like little features on it. So I did like little callouts. This is like like feature breakdown sort of. So like I knew that like there's like a handle and so I know that there's like two points of forces I need. It was those little circles above handle, like one point of force to bring the the, the lever out and one force to, to bring it back. So I knew whatever it was, like it had to it had to do that thing and then there was like some positioning drawing and I was like trying to figure out like where everything was gonna go. And then I made a mock object. This is my mock object. Okay, so it's it's the height of the sink and it's like about the width or something and it's got a it's got a, a handle that moves 90 degrees which is this like Allen wrench like shoved in there. It's got duct tape and it's made out of wood and it's it's not spelled right and it's got a cat print on it. Okay. There's some like pseudocode. Actually, it's really hard to see but there's like cat equals true up there, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so like I was just like kind of like going through the pseudocode like is there like some logic and I'm like no, nah, this is all easy. It's like just like if statements and stuff, which is good because I had to write to see. Okay. So there's um, like my mock object in use. Like I knew I had to like levitate the servo like above the the uh, the, uh, the fulcrum point of the of the the handle, which I'm going to talk about why that is in a second. That was kind of something I sort of figured out not on purpose. Okay. So after like playing with the prototype and stuff, I had I came to the conclusion I, I needed two spikes. I needed a spike on two things, and there were like three questions that I needed to answer. And this was not a formal thing. This this sort of like was all rattling around. All right. So I needed something that detects cats, like that knows that the state has changed, like the cat is there, right, and does something, or at least knows about that. And then I need something that re reacts to that, that like actually moves the handle correctly, like at the right speed, like it doesn't rip itself apart. You know how computers are, like yeah, move the handle, it's like, Poof, you know, or like I don't know. <laughs> so, and then there was like a there were some questions like torque, like how do you measure torque? I don't know. There's like a there's like a device you can buy and it's like a thousand dollars or something. So like I don't even know if like what I'm using, which is basically USB power, like five volts, is like even enough to move this sink. Like what sink do I have? I don't know. So there was like there was like a whole rabbit hole thing, and I luckily I avoided it. Uh, I was like, okay, if it moves it, it moves it. Who cares if I need to measure it? You know. So like it's funny. Anyway, okay. And then like I knew I needed like a precise structure, so. I started getting the impression, okay, I need to levitate this thing. I'm not good with wood, so I can't make it out of wood. Can I make it out of Lego? Can I make it out of like, you know, putty? I don't know anything. Uh, so like, I knew I needed something like really precise, and I didn't know what that was. And because of that fulcrum, I had to like put it like right over the 
the sync, the server right over the sync. And there was a question of like anchoring, like how am I gonna like, it's gonna move something and the opposing force is gonna move it, so like how do I keep it from moving without putting holes in the wall, right? Okay. So like type, 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 research, research, uh, precise structure stuff, came to the micro racks. Has anybody heard of this? Wow, okay, awesome. Micro racks are really cool. They're a little expensive, but they're basically aluminum channel. They're like maker beam, you ever heard of maker beam? So I think these came a little bit before, it doesn't really matter. There was open beam, or maker beam, micro eggs, open beam, I think. Uh, now I sound like an expert on this stuff. But um, it's basically like channel, you get them in like some strips, and then you can hacksaw them down. So this is like me looking at my drawing, hacksawing the parts I need, and it comes with like connectors. You can basically just build any 90 degree object you want. So here I built a rectangle, right? So this is like my abstraction layer, because I put it on the sink, and then I'm done with like the sink part. Because I know I can build anything on this frame, and it's going to go around the sink, right? So there's the abstraction layer in place, and also I learned, like my green question was answered by this because I could just tighten it and it would kind of squeeze the sink. So there's another, beat, like don't, big design up front, right, because maybe your questions will be answered later. Like if I had gone down like the anchoring rabbit hole, like ordered glues and stuff, you can imagine that would been like a waste of time. Okay, so I've got like, that's the 2D thing, and now I need to like start building up because I need to like levitate some things in the air. So I started building up and I realized that like building 3D, like the more like intricate of a shape, the more connector pieces you get, it's kind of weird. So like this is now not four beams, it's eight beams and it's got like a lot more connector pieces. So like I ran out of connector pieces. I ordered a, um, yeah, so I ordered some more. I also ordered um, the server mount. There's like a micro Rex compatible server mount. So that like sat right where I wanted it. And then there's my cap deploy, right? Here's my first deployment to like production, right? Okay. <laughs> So like, you can see like, so this is like trying to show depth on a two dimensional picture, but like the, the screwdriver is Z aligned to the, to the center of the servo. So you can see that it's like right over that little circle on the sink. So right over the fulcrum. Okay, so the reason why it needs to be right over the fulcrum is if you like have two levers moving together, you have to like engineer if you want them to like go together. But if you just put them right on top of each other, then you don't have to engineer. Otherwise they're gonna do like something like this. So that just, I, I don't know. I didn't read that, that just kind of like, I was like really thought hard and that was, I don't know, an, an epiphany moment for me or something. Like, oh yeah, and it, it needs to go right there and that's the only place you can go. Okay, Whew. so a servo, I didn't, I'd never even like use a servo for anything. Uh, comes with all these adapters, like there's some circle ones at the top and one of them is the star. So like a servo just spins, so that's not gonna move a sink handle. So I need something that like attaches to the arm itself, right? So I need an arm. So uh, how am I gonna attach, like, how am I gonna make an arm like out of this, this beam that goes to the, the, uh, the servo? Like what is that even, what is that even? <laughs> so like uh, basically I got lucky and uh, those, like two of the adapters sandwich the star and then, I, it turn, and then I can put the L, like this little L piece, like in between the sandwich. And then once I'm in L piece land, it connects to a beam, right? So there's my arm. And that was, that was totally lucky. That was just like play mode, like we should all be doing. Preach, preachy, getting, getting too preachy, pull it back. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's my arm in practice, you can see. So now I need to like attach it to the arm, so I tried like rubber bands. I actually tried like uh, like Velcro at some point, and um, this th I actually ran like this for a while. I had like another like extra pieces acting sort of like fingers. You can see it's kind of like holding on, like you would like move it with your fingers. So I was like, well, if I want fingers, why don't I just build fingers? So I built fingers, and uh, there, I, sh I took off the excess, but like the the rubber bands are like where your fingertips would be, and that like, like gave some give, but also some stick, which was really nice. So. Um, Like action pack? Sorry, I don't get it. Okay. Right. Action pack. I see. I see. That would have been me on the way home if, okay. Um, French class. Okay. So, um, so that's the hardware thing, right? So you're wondering, like, what is this? Like, this is not Ruby. So um, I still need code to detect cats and move the arm. Um, I needed like communication for that, that uh, logging thing I wanted to do. So I needed like the sync to talk to something, uh, which I want to talk about. And then I needed API and software and like I'm going down the list, I'm like, oh yeah, Rails API, wow, I'm gonna really spend a lot of time on that. Like it was so refreshing, and I'm kind of bearing the lead here, but it was like so refreshing to like just come back to the software world and be like, oh yeah, I need an API. 
phew, after like going through all this like physics torque and like like electricity and you know the universe and stuff. So um, and of course like for no re for no reason at all I decided to use MongoDB because we're talking like worst case two requests per day. Uh, <laughs> I actually just wanted to learn, I, I'd like played around with MongoDB like four years ago, like on another project, and I just wanted to do versioning in MongoDB, so it's like, it's awful, yeah, awful excuse, so. <laughs> but, like, bad engineer, bad engineer, right? But you'll see the internet react to that in a second, so. Okay, architecture time, we need like physio diagrams, okay. So I'm not a senior software engineer, but like I'm a <laughs> engineer of principal all day. Okay, now I'm gonna practice my, my, uh, my Spanish accent, it's uh, terrible. But, uh, okay, so like here's the sync we already talked about, and then there's like this Arduino thing that's sitting there. Arduino is like a C embedded thing, it's not Linux. Um, it's like a Raspberry, the Raspberry Pi weren't even out yet. Okay, so I went with, the, with this Arduino, and then there's this, uh, I talked about communication, so um, there's basically this, this thing called XB, and it's basically, you can think of it as like wireless serial. It's like, remember the old school, like RS232 ports, like, okay. Like dating myself here, but like it's basically like uh, you like turn both of them on and they and they P2P turn into a serial bridge. Okay, so uh, then I had like uh, so I had another end on a server and um, and then Ruby using a serial port gem, watching the serial port reacting to things, which was crazy, which I want to talk about, and then posting it to Rails, and from there on, you guys are like, yeah, yeah, okay. <clears throat> so uh, how I got the the on the on the um, on the sync side, there's this shield, and it's in the, it's in the upper right-hand corner. And it's got this slot. Shields are like basically just uh, like feature <laughs> kits, I guess. You can just stack them up, and it adds a bunch of stuff. These are the, like there's an Ethernet shield, and like this is some kind of like motor thing. You can stack them up forever, and they just really easily add functionality to an Arduino. So one of them XB, so you just plug in XB in that, and it's good to go. On the other <laughs> side, uh, uh, this is not my picture, but um, that little USB cable. That, that was basically on the server side. Uh, on the server side, so that's uh, XB to USB, and from there you're back in like real computer land, right? So, so like those two things is the communication like physical layer basically. So the, for the for the messaging, like more of like the app, this is basically JSON over serial. Um, so like when the, when a sync turns on, in this case is running equals true, like the sync is coming on, it sends a message, and this is I think really similar to what Jonas talked. Uh, this is all your fault, by the way. For, he does a talk, I can do a talk. Okay, so uh, I ended up trying to do this hashing thing because I, all these uh, e um, electrical engineers uh, out there said, if you're doing anything over serial, you need to send a checksum uh, because this is not TCP, right? So uh, you, yeah. So you the, hash, the hash is a checksum? The hash, the hash, the idea, and I'll talk about why this didn't work, is uh, it hashes all the attributes minus the hash, right? So this is just... Uh, so on the Arduino side, it uses MB5 library to hash, and then, you know, on the Ruby side, dehashes. Uh, it just checks attributes. So that that didn't work at all, and I'm going to talk about that right now. So uh, you need it's it's not TCP. So like this is not um, guaranteed. Like we don't even work with UDP a lot, I don't think. But it's not even that. It's it's this is like there can be all kinds of noise and stuff. So all the EE engineers said you need to send a checksum. I was like, great, okay. So the problem is, like the actual, the, like the main MD5 lib at this time. I don't know if it's changed, but like it would work. Like I got this to work, but over time it had some kind of memory leak, and like the Arduino is like really low power. So like even strings are like, whoa, buddy, strings. <laughs> so, and I'm like, uh, so like it would work, but then it would it'd, it'd crash. And like when it crashed, it's not like uh, it would tell you. Like it's like CPU lock. You know, it's like just stops blinking. Uh, you hit reset. Like this is not Linux. It's like <laughs> there's no SSH, you know. So uh, it just like crash hard. Like I don't know, a vending machine would. Like what's going on or something. So um, yeah. So like and then reading JSON off serial was really weird because um, it's basically streaming in. So like if you get a JSON post, it's like a thing, right? But off serial, it's more like stream. So like it's just coming over characters at a time. So. I ended up like writing code to like work, and this ran for a while, but it was it was just kind of weird. And I I'm basically I'm going to talk about why, but yeah. Okay, so I'm going to show you the code, but I'm going to apologize first, which you should never do. But there's basically like three different types of uh, code. Uh, also, this is a long time ago. Rails 303, Mac ports, Homebrew didn't exist. We were all running Leopard, I think. Um, 
So like this, there's like three types of code. Code you don't want anyone to see ever. Code you refactored and you're okay with it, but you're kind of. And then there's like textbook quality code that you emboss in your shoes so that when you walk, you leave beautiful footprints. <laughs> um, this is definitely like code number one. So I never, ever, ever want to do a presentation on this code or share it on GitHub. Here's the URL. <laughs> um, so this is the serial port gem. Um, and basically, you open, it, you open up a serial port and like tiny, tiny variables for, I, actually, I think it is a tiny, a tiny variable. But yeah, t totally unreadable, not, not refactored ever. No tests, yay. Um, but it's basically like, it's, it's like a state, it's sort of like I'm doing a bad state machine sort of thing. But basically, like I have an opener, and then like on a close, then that's the JSON, and then I parse. And uh, if you want to, if you want to read the rest of it. But basically, basically, it just it does what it says. Like it, it's streaming in JSON. I only I know it's going to be one message, and then when I see it close. Now the problem with this is like it doesn't. Well, it posts like this. Right, this is what it looks like when it runs. But um, the problem is like when you. When, when you like uh, try to embed documents, this wouldn't work. The code wouldn't work at all. So, uh, yeah. If I was going to do it again, I probably wouldn't use JSON. I like JSON, uh, but I'd pr most I think most EEs or the embedded people would use like some kind of binary protocol, which essentially works uh, works the same way. Uh, but you would I think more gravitate towards this kind of state machine thing. I think, and this is probably like a Ruby developer goes uh, goes embedded goes to Washington type uh, mistakes or something, right? <laughs> So like, uh, like yeah, definitely do something more like this, where you're basically like trying to write a parser, so you'd have like a count, uh, and you can even like put brackets instead of braces, and then you could actually part, parse like an array of documents. Okay. Anyway. All right. <clears throat> so, here's. Are there any EEs here, by the way? Any EE majors? Wow, I feel so much better. Okay, I'm not so embarrassed. Okay, this is like prototype wire, and God, I did this a long time ago. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, you would not use prototype wire. <laughs> you can just, just pull it out, yay. Uh, and it's a breadboard, you don't use that either. Anyway, okay, so that's, that's like the sink. And there, you can see the modem here, the little antenna. And I put it in a project box and like stuck it into the sink. And uh, hooked up the, the sink. You can see I, I was still using um, Velcro at this time. Uh, yeah, so I had like little hookups so I could like easily debug it. And that was, that was just weird. Okay, and there's like the final thing. Like I made more of a box and um, ended up like clamping it down some more and stuff. Okay, and the, the infrared sensor's not not here. But enough talk. Oh, the internet connection's offline. No, I forgot that I've got it's on YouTube. Oh no. The Wi-Fi passwords on the wall to your left. Yeah, it's can guess. You still use the sink while this thing is on it. Uh, yes, but you can only use the hot water. <laughs> I mean, you can move it and it goes right. Um, what is it? Ruby. Thank you. Okay. Load. Ding, 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 ding. Yay. Yeah, she was great. Yes. This is for me? So that was the first run. That was my first run. Right, yeah. Thank you. OK. Yeah, so like. When that turns on, like that's an event to Rails. When it turns off, that's an event to Rails, and then I can do reporting. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about that. So, yeah, like the dripping was solved. Like that was all tweaks and stuff, and then I put it under the sink, and it ran for a long time. So that was that was four years ago, which was really cool. Okay, so back on the Rails side, it was probably more interesting. Um, I had this Mongoid-based uh, document thing, which I called Sync creatively. Wow, it's yellow, yellow and white text. That's awesome. Um, and basically, it had like th this method was really large, really large, Un <laughs> not refactored, not tested. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a cat faucet, guys. Okay, so 
So like basically it gave you this method, uh, plot by hours, and I was, I was using flot.js. I don't even know if D3, D3.js, I don't even think it was a thing. Uh, but it gave you this histogram. So you see 20, this is uh, 2,300 hours, 20%, 2,200 hours, right? So that's like what it thinks the, the breakdown of <laughs> when my cat drinks at what hour of the day, right? So I'm going to figure out, does she drink at night when we're asleep? Right, that's my, that's my goal. So this plot by hours, all it does is present the data to JavaScript, and JavaScript's going to render this uh, really, really terrible graph. Um, I, I use versions, so like when you're dealing with like collecting metrics, and here I am talking at uh, New Relic about collecting metrics. I'm an expert. Um, I just, I went the route, like there's, you can like shove it into an archive table, which I've seen other like things do and stuff. And you still have to like select from that, so. Uh, I knew I didn't have a lot of data in MongoDB. <laughs> This ran so long, like MongoDB's like document limit got like quadrupled or something like that. So this ended up becoming less and less of a problem. <laughs> I don't know, maybe everyone's doing what I'm doing. But basically, like you just mix in the versions thing, and it just creates this versions uh, attribute, and it just like shovel operators the the state onto the versions. So it's like versioning functionality in the Mongo gen. It's pretty cool. So I decided to go that route, and then you just have to go get all the versions and do the do the you know the munging, the data munging to to suck it out. So there's that 20, 20, uh, 20 40, 40 histogram. Here's the, with the graph of my, my wonderful uh, UI design skills. Notice that this is the uh, Railscast theme. This was when Railscast was still a thing and like actually running and he posted a CSS. That's how long ago this was. <sighs> December 2010, yeah. So more data, like an icon, probably not font awesome. Um, no authentication, nothing. This worked on the iPad though, which is cool. You could like go around the house. Yeah, feature creep. Okay, so eventually, um, eventually, I got sick of my Rails app, um, just like the graphing and stuff, silent JavaScript errors and stuff. So I, like, I was already looking at this Fenora Netrix gem, which is like a it's, a it's a Ruby gem that has like a built-in Sinatra server and database and stuff. And uh, this this project's been like in flux. He has a pro option now, and uh, it's I don't know. Yeah, it's one of those gems. I, I really like it, but it it. Uh, it's, it's been in flux, right? So uh, the, the only way I could get like the, the histogram view was this kind of like huge meta view and it's trying to like do means on, a, on an hour. So this is all just garbage. So, but I can't, you can't customize it really. So Fenord is great if you just use it for what it does out of the box. It's, it's kind of hard to customize. I'm sorry if the author is uh, listening to this, but uh, he, he, I think he has like more pro thing. He like switched to Scala and then I think he's got like a pro thing. So the project's uh, been under a lot of uh, development and stuff. But yeah, Fenora Mesh is pretty cool. It's, it's cool, a gem, little gem server. It's got a Ruby client, and you just send it a send it a message. Uh, so it's it's easy to set up. And you can see, I've got like 400 samples at this point, and uh, 406 of the screenshot, and I had a lot more. And this is like where I basically answered the question. So the graph got bigger, but basically, like kind of the shape stayed the same from 2 a.m. until 5 a.m. She didn't use the faucet. <laughs> yeah. And that became like more and more clear. So I don't know if it really answered the question, but <laughs> it answered one. She doesn't drink at night, so, or she like almost never drinks at night, right? So she only drinks up when, when we're up and moving around. Okay. So that's how the project went, but what were like some of the problems? So um, like I've, I've found like this magical method. This, this is like C, but detach, like turns off electricity to the servo, it would like, it would like try to turn, but then like not make it, it would be off, it would like try to move to five, right? And it would be at like, you know, 501, 5.01, it would be like, I need to go five, and like, and like never get there, it would just like, just buzz, you know? So uh, detach solved it, but didn't really solve it, and that's just kind of like a dragons, there be dragons thing. Um, yeah, C code, fun. Uh, the frame torque, uh, was weird, like I, I kind of like uh, anchored it down the best, the best way I could and like kind of iterated on like how to clamp, where to clamp and stuff like that. Flot JavaScript was hard to like deal with and like the data formats differ than every other JavaScript library. As you guys probably know, like XY, you know, pair, does it want pairs, does it want like an object, like the order, does it want an array of arrays, does it, you know, does it want more than that? That was kind of crazy. Uh, and then like this ran for a long time, so this is like when I did like dist upgrade on Ubuntu and stuff. I actually had a point where like, someone introduced a breaking, because uh, I'm using the serial port gem, like the kernel broke serial, but then like, but then there was a patch, but that patch broke networking. So like, I would SCP and like, the kernel would like panic basically. So I could either have the cat faucet 
or networking, and I wasn't cool with that. I had to have both. So uh, I like figured out DKMS and blah, blah, blah. So that's like actually I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> but yeah, it eventually got fixed. I'm not, I'm not bashing on Linux. Eventually it got fixed, but it was, it was kind of crazy. I think I'm in like this weird edge case. Like who's running a serial port? Okay. So world's reaction, world's reaction. Like <laughs> this is just like a stupid toy project for my house. But Hackaday picked up on it off my blog somehow. I don't know. So I posted my video and uh, <laughs> 21 comments at this time. And there are some real gems in the comments. <laughs> Let me tell you. Let me tell you, you know, like, I don't know. I know there's like some people that like have internet like notability and stuff, but man, you, you like remember, you really remember those negative comments. Like 10 people say nice thing and then one person, don't read the comments, yeah. <laughs> okay, and then the actual store where I bought the components like put me on their homepage and that video's broken me as I moved it, but uh, my, friend, my friend like called me and he's like, dude, you're on SparkFun. I'm like, what? I didn't tell, I just told like friends about this, you know, so. I don't know, someone's like Googling for everything Arduino or something, I don't know. Uh, and then Adafruit, a shop that I didn't even shop at at that point, but now I do, it's an awesome store. Uh, she, she runs a really amazing site and awesome videos if you, if you guys are interested in any hardware hacking and stuff. Um, and this is like some other uh, forum, random forum or something. Uh, the, the reason why I took the screenshot, this, this guy said, um, he would have done this, he would have done X, Y, Z, but, but I'm surprised he didn't run MongoDB on the Arduino. So, <laughs> so Arduino is not Linux, and like I said, it had a hard time with strings. So I don't think there's like any part of the MongoDB C like base, like daemon part that it could run. I don't, I don't even think it could run anything. But that's okay. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. That's fine. And uh, <laughs> this is funny. Like subject, all current buzzwords, one project. Yes, I, I agree. I totally agree. MongoDB, Arduino, and Rails. Yes. Okay. So we had a, we had a science fair at work. We had a science fair at work, so I, I brought it to work and uh, the, the architecture diagram, everything you've seen, and then I brought a little stuffed cat to like trigger it and like show everybody. The funny, th the reason why I include this is I met this lady. She was super nice, and we we just talked. She had built a laser fence for her her kitchen counter, so like when the cat tripped, you know, it always jumps like in a certain way, and it would trip the fence and set off a, like a little Pizio speaker, you know, like the annoying like ringer thing, and like scare the cat off. So. I did not expect that, but it was super awesome to talk to her. We were like, and like everyone's saying, nerds. Okay. <laughs> so like the, the coolest thing though was like this was like a thing around my house, right? So like people would come over and like wash their hands, like what is that, you know? So like everyone's everyone, you know, like to, we're talking about the project, and it was just like so much fun to to show off, and um, that that was like kind of like made me start like doing a little bit more hardware hacking, like, like playing around with like RSpec3 or something like some new really esoteric and abstract thing is interesting, but it's really hard to like demo that, you know, especially like kind of outsiders. I'm um, not trying to create a line but, um, or a group, but like the, the demo factor of like physical things and hardware hacking is a lot of fun and you can have code on the back end that they don't care about. So um, yeah, that's my, that's my daughter uh, wondering. Water and a cat. She like learned to play play with it too. Like she, I think she's like one at that time. So, um, yeah. So my own reaction to it was like the firmware thing. So I could just talk about this. I hope I'm not running out of time. Um, like firmware is like a thing that people know in the general populace. Like firmware is like a thing I update my router, my phone, blah blah. But like this is like one piece of firmware in my house. Like basically just software that's embedded, right? Um, that I have to update. So like. If it doesn't do something I want, I have to like take my laptop over, hook up USB, like update the code, debug it, and stuff like that. Was just really weird. It might sound really strange, but like everything else is just gonna like take care of itself. Oh damn you, Sony! You know, new firmware that bricked my PS3 or whatever, you know, or damn you, Apple, including whatever, you know. But like this firmware was like mine, and like I had to like maintain it. You know, that was just that was that was really strange. Like, why isn't this cat faucet working? You know. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then, like, I, I was surprised, like, how long this ran. Like, once it like, kind of, like, got all the kinks worked out and, like, solved the, the instrumentation and question and stuff, this thing just, like, ran forever. Like, embed is really awesome. It just, just keeps going. It's got no problems. Um, I already talked about everything. Wow, I've got an empty LI tag. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to talk about that really quick. This is almost over. Uh, some things that I learned from it. So, like, basically, Arduino is, like, really low in memory. Like, just get your problems away from C as fast as you can. Like, if you're going to solve one thing and you can solve it in Ruby, just do it in there. Just run away. 
like especially strings and stuff. Uh, C is crazy. I respect anybody that does C code. Um, like we're so like like focused on like perfection and stuff, like true false, true false and stuff. But like microhex is like tolerant. There's like such like engineers in this room. There's like tolerance, so like it's okay. You're close enough. And like I found out, like microrex, I didn't have to like get down to like one sixteenth like accuracy. It, it can it can adjust, and and, some, and a lot of other things can adjust too. There's like tolerances. Yeah, like if you're gonna build something like a cube, order lot. Don't order length. Order lots of bolts and the connector stuff, right? Uh, if you're gonna build something long and simple, then just get length and a few connector pieces. I guess that makes sense if you think about it. But I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I also didn't know that servo torque changes the voltage. That's cool. <laughs> um, like actual physical installation is really tricky. Like you have no idea. There's no tests. Like I can, I don't know. Like it doesn't fit. Okay. Uh, it doesn't fit because you're an idiot. Okay. Let's go back. No problem. Uh, don't favor tools like I did. Uh, Mongo was actually kind of weird sometimes, and I knew I was like forcing the the solution in there. Okay, we're almost done. So I already talked about that. I already talked about that too, and uh, yeah, I already talked about that too. Like hardware is really weird, and I love I love coming back to software. It was like a cool breeze. Like the, all the problems are easy. I already know everything, everything. Um, and then like throwing away the app was kind of annoying, or at least painful, sort of. Um, it was okay though. I, you know, it didn't work out. You learn something, and you'll always remember it. That's that's fine. Just just delete it. Just delete. Delete the dead code, no problem. Okay, but the biggest insight of all, um, I think the point about this is, um, like, the 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 thing that helped me think the most was this like the staycation thing. It was like showing up every day and like not having a lot of distraction. And I'm not saying like be a shut in, but like the like the just like the staring at the problem and like unhealthily obsessing about the problem or whatever was like I think what really like got me from beginning to end without like some other distraction or some other like you know fat or something uh, coming in and distracting me. Like the, the, the staycation where you could like, there's something I want to learn, so I'm just going to like work on this and I'm going to take, I'm going to make time for myself and I'm going to like work on that. I think that's what it was. It was the contiguous part. It wasn't like, I'm going to work in the evenings, I'm going to do it here and there, little bits and pieces. It was like the really the big chunks and stuff. So that's, that's what I took away from the entire project anyway. Thanks, that's it.